I call David Parker, the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I rise to take a call on part one. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, the, um, the purpose of the, uh, the amendment to the bill that came to select committee that was recommended by the select committee uh, in clause 59A wasn't to uh, allow the Minister of Finance to interfere in any one investment decision uh, by the uh, superannuation custodians or the guardians of the New Zealand Superannuation Fund, but was to exercise some control over what class or classes of investments or activities ought to be allowed through a fund investment vehicle which overrides the original protection that was set out in the legislation that the guardians ought to be passive managers rather than active managers of investments. The reason for the insertion of that in the original legislation was sound. It was overseen by uh, Dr Michael Cullen uh, and he was concerned that the fund become under the influence of uh, politicians an investment fund that would invest in the sorts of classes of investment that ought not to be funded by a super fund but ought to be funded by a government. And the reason for that... Why, the re What's that? Actually, uh, Oh, that deserves a response, actually. No, that wasn't, that wasn't the intention at all. This side of the House generally properly funds things that ought to be funded off the government's balance sheet by collecting enough taxation to fund the things that ought to be funded, things like roads, uh, things like um, schools, things like hospitals, none of which would be privatised by this side of the House, but those are things would be privatised by the National Party side of the House, and if they privatised them in order to get their seedy little plans off, off the books, they would actually be encouraging the super fund of the day to effectively underwrite their mismanagement by paying for some of the things that they hadn't funded through appropriate collection of taxation. And why Dr Michael Cullen foresaw that as a problem is because he's a, he was and is a historian who's seen these things gone down in the past. And where that comes unstuck at some future date is that when the super fund is wound up and the money is, is, is realised by the super fund from their investment at a time when New Zealand will be cash strapped to make to meet the increasing costs of super in the future. It's a nonsense if the government's effectively asking for money out of the economy to put back into the economy at a time when uh, the economy may be stretched to find a replacement investor. So, Mr Chairman, the reason that we had these underlying controls on what the super fund could and couldn't do was to avoid that eventuality. Now, uh, since then, we've had a number of changes by the, uh, the national government. They came to power, remember, promising to increase the proportion of the super fund that was invested in New Zealand. How's that gone? <laughs> How's that gone? I'm surprised we didn't see any reference to it in this bill. Because if there was a place for it to be, it would be in part one of this bill where they were restating what the objectives are for the, um, for the super fund and what the restrictions are. Because they actually haven't achieved that objective. And the reason they haven't achieved the objective is not because of the, uh, the inability to use fund investment vehicles, but because the idea wasn't sound in the first place. Another Mr. Speaker, promise. another broken promise uh, by, the, uh, by the, uh, the national government. And in any event, we come to the, uh, to the uh, change that is proposed. There are instances where controlling interests are held in New Zealand-based interest, in New Zealand-based investments, and uh, in order for that to be done more practically, uh, it is good that the uh, guardians of the super fund be given the ability to use fund investment vehicles. But it is nonetheless a departure from what was originally intended, and let you get closer and closer to the guardians becoming an active manager rather than a passive manager. And that's why the uh, control that was provided for unanimously 
unanimously by the select committee, Mr. Chairman. The Honourable David. Unanimously by the select committee in clause 59A, 1A, and 1B was appropriate because it said that um, the guardians may exercise the power, which is to to uh, to facilitate to for the purposes of holding or facilitating or managing the investments of the fund. A fund investment vehicle can be used, and the guardians were allowed to exercise that power in respect of passing passive entities and in respect of any other entities only with the approval of the Minister of Finance. So to go beyond passive investments required the approval of the Minister of Finance. And the Minister of Finance could come back and say, well, having thought about it, I'm going to approve this for a class of non-passive investments. But now, because the government's stripping out this provision, they're actually uh, departing further from the original intentions, which was to leave this as a passive investor rather than an active manager. Now, I don't know if many people can remember far, as far back as the old super fund that the, uh, that the Muldoon government crashed after election, the Kirk fund that was designed by Roger Douglas. Now, the advertisements that we used to knock over that particular attempt at decent New Zealand savings were Cossacks marching across the screen in cartoons because the government through the super fund was going to own and control so much of the New Zealand marketplace that it would somehow be c communism on the way, these Cossacks marching across the street. Now what are these guys doing? They're, they're, they're allowing, in a general sense, the super fund to become an active manager rather than a passive manager. And I'm looking forward to the day when we see Stephen Joyce using his control of the media as he has, through his old linkages, to actually bring back those advertisements to advertise the fact that in this amendment... <laughs> well, actually, those people didn't have much hair. <laughs> they had furry hats, but there was not much, uh, not much under them, Mr Speaker. So that's why, that's why uh, the Labour Party is opposing yeah. you, the Minister's yeah. amendment, and I want to hear the justification as to why we should, holus bolus, be allowing active management through these uh, fund investment vehicles without the Minister of Finance keeping an eye on it, because that's what's happening here. And of course, I don't trust the Minister of Finance on this because he's got it wrong from the start. He called it a dog, he stood up in this parliament and said that this should be opposed because it was a dog. I don't trust them because they've underinvested in the fund, and we know because the guardians uh, measure how much money we would, how much wealthier we would be in New Zealand if they had continued their their um, the uh, contributions to the to the fund. Uh, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Chairman, I think I'll I'll leave it there. Uh, but that is the reason. Well, actually, the minister in the chair now who has now taken on finance roles, I would be very pleased for her to stand and say, why should we allow the Guardians to have this holus bolus right to actively manage what was meant to be passively managed, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman.